As a dermatologist, I get asked a lot, like, what are your favorite sunscreens? And I haven't talked about my favorite sunscreens in a while, and there are definitely some new ones in the rotation. So today I'm going to take you through my current favorite sunscreens. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I try a lot of sunscreens for my job and just because it's a personal interest of mine. So sometimes choosing favorites can be really tricky. These are my current favorites. These are the sunscreens that I'm reaching for a lot on a regular basis. It doesn't mean that favorites that I've had in the past aren't still exceptional sunscreens, but kind of like a wardrobe where you rotate in new pieces and you find new things that you've fallen in love with. I feel the same way about my sunscreen collection. Now, in order for a sunscreen to ever come into my favorites rotation, it does have to meet some baseline criteria. Number one, it has to be broad spectrum, and that means that it protects against both UVA radiation and UVB radiation. In sort of the simplest terms, UVA rays penetrate deeper into the skin, and those contribute mostly to premature skin aging. And UVB rays don't penetrate as deeply into the skin and contribute more to burning as well as your increased risk of developing a skin cancer. That being said, UVA radiation absolutely can contribute to sunburns and increased risk of developing a skin cancer, and UVB radiation absolutely can contribute to premature skin aging. But each of those radiation groups sort of have their specialty, if you will. So you can see why it's important to protect against both UVA rays and UVB rays. Now, in order to get that label of broad spectrum sunscreen, the regulations differ a little bit between countries. Sunscreens may have to meet slightly different criteria depending on where they are manufactured and sold, but in general, broad spectrum is a good jumping off point for ensuring that you're getting some coverage for both UVA and UVB radiation. Second, I'm almost always looking for something that's SPF 30 or higher. SPF stands for sun protection factor, and it's really a marker of how much UVB protection you have. Yes, it takes UVA into consideration somewhat, and especially if it's SPF 30 or higher and it's labeled as broad spectrum, you know you're getting some degree of UVA radiation protection, but I really think of SPF more as a marker for the UVB protection that you're getting. When it comes to UVA protection, sometimes it can be a little trickier to figure out because not all sunscreens are required to put any type of indicator to show you what the UVA protection is. But of course I want that UVA protection because one of the benefits of wearing sunscreen is that prevention of premature skin aging, prevention of hyperpigmentation, and that's what UVA is really helping with. What's nice is some sunscreens will indicate the amount of UVA protection they offer. Usually this is done through a PA label, so you might have seen on a sunscreen bottle it says PA followed by one plus, two plus, three pluses, or four pluses, and the more pluses you have, it goes up to four, the more UVA protection that sunscreen will afford you. We usually see that PA label on Asian sunscreens, although some US sunscreens are now incorporating that as well, which I think is awesome. The more information you have when making your sunscreen choices, the better. Oftentimes you can also see an indication for UVA protection from European sunscreens that they don't use the PA system. They use something called the PPD system. And the higher the PPD or the persistent pigment darkening number, the more UVA protection you have. So in addition to having a preference for sunscreens that are broad spectrum, but also have both high UVB and UVA coverage, I also want my sunscreen to just feel good on my skin. I've tried so many sunscreens over the years that meet all the criteria on paper, but when you actually go to apply them, they feel heavy on the skin, they're sticky, they don't play nicely with the other products in my skincare routine, so they pill up or ball up on the skin. And those are all really important factors as well because the most important thing when it comes to sunscreen is finding one that you enjoy wearing. And even if it meets all the right protective criteria, if you don't like how it sits on your face, you're never going to keep wearing it. So I definitely find myself being drawn to certain types of sunscreen textures just based on what I personally enjoy applying, but also my skin type. And just a little background on my skin type, if you're new to the channel, I would say that I have normal to dry skin. I also have rosacea, though it's very well controlled right now. So even though my skin is a little bit sensitive, it's a lot less sensitive than it used to be, which is like, thank you. Um, and if you have rosacea, there's hope you can get it under control. The other things I would say are that I have some hormonal breakouts from time to time, but I would not call my skin acne prone. I would really call someone acne prone if 
when they're using new products and something's a little bit pore clogging, they find themselves breaking out. I don't find myself to be sensitive to products in that way. And then lastly, I really like for my sunscreen to wear well under makeup. Even though I don't wear foundation every single day, it's just something that's a nice bonus feature to have in my sunscreen. And I've had lots of sunscreens that I've sort of enjoyed using in the past, but because they didn't go on that well under makeup, I just found myself reaching for them a lot less. Okay, let's get into the sunscreens. First up, I have the Perito Daily Soft Touch Sunscreen SPF 50 PA++++. So that is those four pluses that I was talking about earlier in the video. That means it has really good UVA protection in addition to UVB protection. This is a newer launch from Perito. It is exceptional in my opinion. It's sort of the counterpart to their daily go-to sunscreen, which is a slightly heavier, oilier, wetter texture, which is great if you have dry skin, but if you have more normal to combination to oily skin, this soft touch sunscreen, I think you will absolutely love. When you apply this and rub it into the skin, it really leaves behind this very skin-like finish. So it's not matte, but it's definitely not dewy or glowy either. I should also say it just rubs into the skin so effortlessly. It feels like putting on a lightweight moisturizer. And honestly, some of the time I will just use this as my moisturizing step as well. When it comes to the UV filters used in the sunscreen, it uses chemical, also known as organic sunscreen filters. Many of these UV filters are not available in the United States, but they are available abroad. I consider them to be highly safe and highly efficacious. And many of my favorite sunscreens use these more advanced chemical filters that aren't available here yet. The last couple things I'll mention about this sunscreen. One, it is incredibly comfortable on the skin, not just when you apply it, but over the course of the day, I don't feel the sunscreen on my face. And that might sound like a weird thing to say, but if you've ever worn kind of a heavier, sticky sunscreen over the course of the day, you sort of build up this awareness that there's something on your face. And I never feel that with this particular sunscreen. Also, I love that it has two ounces and a lot of sunscreens come in like one ounce or 1.7 ounces. So just having like a little bit more in the packaging, that's a win. The next sunscreen on my list is one that I've spoken about quite a bit, but it continues to be a favorite of mine. So I had to include it here. And that is the beauty of Chosun. This is the Relief Sun Rice and Probiotics SPF 50 PA++++. This is a Korean sunscreen that sort of went viral in the last year. A lot of people within the skincare community started talking about it. And then sort of the general population got their hands on this sunscreen and realized, oh my gosh, sunscreen can be lightweight. It can be effortless to apply. It can be moisturizing. And I think for a lot of people, especially in the US, they had just never tried a sunscreen like that before. So when I have patients or friends who don't like sunscreen or haven't been able to find one that they like or can't get their partner to wear sunscreen or can't get their kids to wear sunscreen, this is the one that I typically recommend. I call it the gateway sunscreen because it essentially opens people's eyes to what's possible with sunscreen. I should also mention this is really beautiful under makeup. It has a slightly dewy finish. So when I compare it to the Perito I just talked about, which has more of a skin-like finish, you'll have like a little bit more sheen on the skin, but it's certainly not wet when you're using the Beauty of Chosun. Also for a textural comparison, they're pretty similar, but I would say the Perito is slightly creamier where the Beauty of Chosun has a slightly more gel-like texture to it. One other Korean sunscreen I wanted to give a shout out to is by Skin1004 or 1004. I don't know how you say the brand. It's their Madagascar Centella Hyaluseca Water Fit Sun Serum SPF 50 PA++++. This is incredibly similar to the Beauty of Chosun. Like if I put them on, I don't know if I would be able to actually tell the difference between them. But the thing I like about this sunscreen is that it has this little ergonomic pump. And I don't know, I, I love a pump feature. And so I have been reaching for this a lot lately, even though it is incredibly similar to the Beauty of Chosun because I kind of prefer the packaging more. And you know, when you're looking at your favorites, it's not just about the formula, right? It's about everything. Another current sunscreen favorite of mine is the Naturium Duo Moisturizer SPF 50. If you have dry skin, if you want your skin to feel just super, super moisturized from your sunscreen, you have to try this. I do advise for a Naturium and something that's kind of funny about this sunscreen is when it first came out, I was using it a ton. I talked about it on my Instagram, especially because it was kind of winter time. I wanted something that was super hydrating and moisturizing. So I used it a lot and then I sort of clocked it as an awesome sunscreen and I put it in the back of my cabinet to kind of start rotating new things in to try other things. And I forgot about it for a little while. And then just a couple weeks ago, I had a new patient in my clinic, but she had followed me on YouTube for a little while and she came in and her skin was 
flawless. Like, I don't even know what I could offer this patient because her skin was so beautiful. And I was asking her what she was using on her skin because it was so luminous. And she was like, oh, I got my sunscreen recommendation from you. It's the Naturium sunscreen. And I was like, oh, I, I gotta go get that out of the back of my cabinet. So needless to say, she is back in the rotation. And I would say out of all the sunscreens that I'm talking about today, this one is the thickest and the creamiest. So when it first comes out of the pump, it can almost be surprising. Like, whoa, that's really thick. I don't know how that's going to rub in, but it so easily works itself into the skin. This has all chemical or organic UV filters as well. So it doesn't leave a white cast behind and it just leaves such a beautiful shine to the skin in a way that doesn't look oily, just very hydrated and nourished. So I would say all the sunscreens I just talked about are sort of my daily rotation sunscreens, but something that all of these have in common is that they are not water resistant. So I definitely have some faves that I wanna mention for when I'm going to be sweating or doing outdoor activities or swimming or in the pool or what I would take on vacation. So first up is the EV Technology. This is their Daily Defense Face Mousse SPF 50. This is a Swedish sunscreen and it comes out as a foam. So kind of a fun texture there, but I talked about this in my favorites of 2022 video because I think it is such an incredible sunscreen. So of course I love this sunscreen because the amount of protection it affords the skin is exceptional. It has super high UVB and UVA coverage and it has that water resistance, but I also love it because it goes on so beautifully under makeup. It is a wonderful makeup primer. And that can be kind of rare for these more water resistant sunscreens because a lot of the film formers, which is what makes them water resistant, sometimes can like pill up on the skin or ball up under makeup. And this one doesn't, this like locks everything in and it keeps it ready to go. This also happens to be the sunscreen that I will wear if I'm going to an outdoor wedding or some type of outdoor event where I'm going to be wearing a good amount of makeup and I just won't be reapplying my sunscreen because yes, a lot of times I will reapply my sunscreen over makeup, but there are certain occasions where I'm not risking messing up my makeup pretty much for anything. And in that case, I will use this. This just grips to the skin so incredibly well that I feel like I have that extra protection even when I'm not able to reapply. And then the foam vehicle that it comes with is just sort of fun and it's pretty easy to rub in, surprisingly. The one thing you'll have to note is obviously you cannot just use a quarter teaspoon of this sunscreen to get adequate protection for your face and neck. So the EV Technology website recommends that you use a golf ball sized amount to coat your face and neck and that should give you adequate protection. The other water resistant sunscreen that I reach for a lot is actually a Japanese sunscreen and it is the Suncut Aqually UV Protect Gel SPF 50 PA++++. This stuff is Wonderful. When you apply this, it's pretty cool. It sort of transforms from a cream to a gel, but it doesn't really look like a gel when it first comes out of the container. It does have alcohol in it. And I don't say that because alcohol is a bad thing in skincare. Alcohol can actually be really helpful with how the product lays on the skin, with how it dries down, etc. But if you're sensitive to alcohol, this might be one worth skipping, but I am not sensitive to it. Even with my rosacea prone skin, I don't find that it flares it up. So that is why this has become a favorite of mine. I also love just how well this dries down on the skin. Like you put it on and it feels like 10 seconds later, you're totally ready to go. This is one that pretty much is always with me when I'm hiking or doing any type of outdoor activity because it's great for reapplication. And then I also feel like I can offer it to everyone else and introduce them to an awesome sunscreen. So that's sort of a roundup on my current favorite facial sunscreens, but I also wanted to give a shout out to some body sunscreens because your body needs protection too. One thing that's important to mention about body sunscreens is you can totally use them on your face. There are no rules that you have to use these on your body and that they're not safe for your face. They're totally safe for your face. Sometimes body sunscreens can be a little bit thicker or less cosmetically elegant. So you might not want to use them on your face, but sometimes body sunscreens are just repackaged facial sunscreens that cost a lot less. So my first recommendation is a Korean sunscreen. It is the Derma B Everyday Sunblock SPF 50 PA++++. This is labeled as a face and body sunscreen and it is 6.7 ounces. So that is so much more sunscreen than you usually get in like a little facial tube. Application wise, rubs in really well to the skin. It feels very moisturizing. It has a little bit of luminosity to it, but it is really not shiny at all. One thing worth noting though, is that it does have fragrance 
fragrance. It smells kind of sweet and maybe slightly herbal. It's a very pleasant scent, but if you are fragrance sensitive, maybe skip it. But I think that is a great go-to face and body sunscreen. Another body sunscreen that I adore and is perhaps my most recommended sunscreen of any kind over the past several years is the Banana Boat Light as Air. This is an SPF 50 sunscreen. It is water resistant for 80 minutes. It is so light as air. I mean, it's like applying a lightweight body lotion. It is exceptional. And I think that whole tube is like less than $10. This also does have a little bit of fragrance. It's a very light, sweet smell that kind of goes away once the sunscreen dries down. But I feel like a lot of people prefer that to the traditional kind of chemical sunscreen scent. So I very much enjoy putting this on. One thing I will say though, is because it rubs in so well, I think it's easy to under apply it. So you really have to make sure that you're using the right amount when you're applying sunscreen to your body. And that typically is a shot glass worth. So 1.5 ounces for the whole body. Of course, you have to adjust your calculations if you have any areas that are covered. Okay, that's the roundup on my current favorite sunscreens. I'm realizing now that they are all sort of chemical or organic sunscreens. So if you would like me to go over my favorite mineral or physical sunscreens, please let me know because I definitely have some faves there as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please put your favorite sunscreen down in the comments below. I always love to see what you guys are using. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.